See, the problem this past fall with the middle school and high school is the citizen said, it's just more of the same that they've always done, but Mr. Sweat and Mr. Campbell are trying to twist it just a little bit. You know, just because people say, well, Mr. Sweat ran a good high school, that means he's running a good process with the redistricting. And, you know, I couldn't say they weren't, I mean, we did the best we could do, but, you know, we tried to make it as open as we could. I talked to Kelly. He laughed about it. He said, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. You need to go through a different type of process, though, Sam. It's called transparency. It's called data-driven. It's called, let me show you. Read this article. You know, become educated, you know. So, I mean, you do the best you can do, but when C.W. Campbell and Sam Sweat have about 45 other things on the plate, there's just so much time you can spend on redistricting. So that's why the board and that's why the superintendent said if Mr. if Mr. Kerry can come in and assist us and we can do something different, then let's do it. And I give them the credit. I give the board members and the superintendent credit. Because I don't think I'd be standing up here if we didn't have someone to help us. I'll be honest with you, I think we needed it. And I think this community will appreciate it. And is it costing us some money? Yes, it is. But it's not the expense that was reported after we hired them. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Out of curiosity, if this one's data-driven, how is the other redistricting? How has that been done? It was data driven. It was with different data. It was with different data. It was with It was with Edulog data that a lot of citizens reminded me of last year. But Mr. Campbell and I looked at the dots and we looked at and and, and I felt like we did a we did a we did a good job. The problem was is we moved some some uh, students out of Peachtree City into a Phoenix Mill Middle School and there was a certain group of of citizens that weren't happy with that. And I understand that. But, you know, it may be that it comes out of this process that some people aren't going to be happy with it. I don't know. We don't know yet. We haven't gone there. But, you know, I'm willing to go down that road as long as it's down to driven. This process going to show maybe where we don't even need, like, is there a chance that we might not need the school that hasn't broken ground or the one that already has? Is that a possibility? Because I know sometimes it seems like you buy land where you can, not necessarily where it's needed. So it, how is this going to impact on the process? I think the process, we have to trust the process as we go. And I think the other thing is, is you need to realize when we hired Mr. Carey, that the two pieces of property for the elementary schools were already in place, and we were already pregnant when he came into the process. <laughs> Now, I'm just being real honest no, with y'all. I mean, and those two elementary schools are in the bond. Right. I, I so, I don't know how else to answer that question. I, I think it's an excellent question, and we even talked about that question might be answered tonight. I don't know how else to answer it, unless you, Mr. Gary, do you, you have a better answer? No, you're already pregnant. <laughs> on the headline. <laughs> Those words came from a board member. I'm not going to talk about that. It's a good question. It is a good analogy. And, and, and he, said, he said to me, he said, Sam, I'm going to do the very best to help you. I wish I could have been here two years with you prior. But what are you going to do? You're going to do the best you can. As my mom used to say, you can't cry over spilt milk. And I'm not saying we have to look at the data, though. We have to see where the data leads us. Good questions. Other questions of Mr. Carey or Mr. Campbell, Ms. Watson? So based on these MPs, is it still, is it safe to say, especially since now it is becoming so data driven, is it safe to say there will be changes at every elementary school? I would say that let's not jump to conclusions. I would say, I, I personally, I, Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, yeah, it's yeah. not safe to say that. Why would we? I mean, what's no, I don't know. Being I mean, you know, you go. I mean, no. when you're representing a school that you, that most of the people don't think they're going to be highly affected by this, right. but if, like you said, you're talking elementary school redistricting. Sure. It makes everyone extremely nervous. Sure. So people, you know. And let me tell you who's most aware answer, of that. My standard answer has been. Let, let me tell you who's most aware of that, and that's an excellent question. That man right there 
is most aware of how nervous parents are when it comes to elementary school redistricting and making sure that this plan is in place for five years at a minimum. And this man over here, Dr. Dakotas, is very much aware of that. And I'm right in the middle of them. And then and, as soon as our day went up that we were doing this, we are too. Your job, <laughs> your like, job, no, I've got people your job is to represent your constituents in your school, okay? And so you'll do that. But I think for us to say there's going to be changes to every elementary school, we're putting the cart before the horse. Okay. We have to wait, and like, he, like Mr. Carey said, he will give me some scenarios when we meet at the next meeting, we put everything out on the table, the data, the trends, and the audits, so Mr. Carey by then will have time to have looked at them, make sure that Mr. Campbell and Ms. Watson numbers gel with his numbers after he reviews everything. Then we can sit down and look at it. And really, next meeting will be when we'll start doing some hard work. We really will. And, I, and I'm, I'm thinking like him every two weeks now, because then we can breathe, debrief, we can come back and work. And I want to break up into committees, and Mr. Campbell and Ms. Watson and myself will help work with the groups and facilitate. And then we come back together as one large group and talk about what we've discussed. And your job is to represent your constituents at your school and then communicate effectively with them. Let me interject something here. For yes, sir. Um, you remember our first meeting, while you're a representative of your school, you're representing the whole school district. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, think, you know what that means. Yeah. You know the difference. Well, I think what might be as valuable as us representing our school is kind of sharing with them more of the process and how it is data driven, exactly. giving them confidence in the process. That's a great. As much great of, idea. or more than coming back and saying, "Nanny, nanny," nan, you know, it right. can get real petty with this whole. Yeah. And, and I think that's what has been missing in the past. Mm -hmm. I think the how it, we get absolutely, this. absolutely. You know, what's the journey? Absolutely, versus? absolutely. And if you trust the journey, and if we do the little things right, the outcome's going to it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. I mean, well, people have looked at me when I said I'm really excited about what's going to come out of elementary school redistricting. They look at me like. Is he crazy? Yeah, well, maybe just a little bit. It's going to be okay. Yes, ma'am. How are you going to do the three groups? We're going to probably do them randomly. Rather than having uh, elementary, middle, and high work together as a feeder to represent that group, I want to do it randomly so we can think about what he stated that we represent Fayette County. And then I think it gives us some more, it gives us a better collection of ideas. We talked about lining everybody up, and we all would just pick a number and start picking our teams. <laughs> and then there was the last person. Oh, I'm going to walk on that team. When you come on August 30th from 7 to 9, come in the side door. I'll have it open rather than the front door. And we'll, we'll work over here in room two. Will there be bodyguards when we leave? <laughs> we'll take care of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Does it look like it will be on Thursdays? Well, I wanted to stay from Wednesday, stay away from Wednesdays because of church nights. And it's Thursday. I, 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 I'm, I'm flexible. Is Thursday okay with y'all? Yeah. yeah. And I want to limit it from 7 to 9 no matter what we're doing. I'm going to try to hold the, hold the line now. Yes, sir. We're talking about giving the ability to show how this process is being worked, yet you know better than we how this process is working. We're learning this process. Is there something that can be done via, whether it's the video, the PowerPoint presentations, some kind of a package where that can be on the website? Yeah. That yeah. you can that's give everyone else that information. Okay. That's a great idea. And, and Melinda, that's one reason she's videotaping this. Am I correct, Melinda? Um, I guess. <laughs> Well, I thought we were going to do a feed, and, and we can have Mr. Mr. Carey talking about the process so you can tell someone they can go to Channel 24, or they can go to our website, and they can view what we're talking about. We, I think we were planning to give updates from time to time right. on the website. Okay. I, I don't know if we have the capabilities to post a video or not on okay. the site. I've looked at that in the past. Well, i tell you what we can do. Melinda, remind me. We can put the process on the website. 